in there, Giles. It's a court. Right, we found him. You! Mr. Hale! Go in there anyway and I speak! A moment, sir, a moment. Go behind my wife! Have you dared come more into this court? Have you gone daft, Corey? You're not a Boston judge yet, Baltimore! You will not call me daft! Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir. And a more contention. I am asked a question. I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres and timber in addition. As my wife would be condemned now, and I didn't expect to help her cause with such contemptuous right! Be gone! Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. But, sir, the tone lies about her life. Then you take it upon yourself to decide what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside. Your Honor, I meant no disrespect. Disrespect indeed! It's a disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the Supreme Government of this province. Do you know it? Your Honor, I never send my wife for a witch. I always think you're reading books. And they come into my house and they take her away. What books? What are you talking about, man? This is my third wife, Your Honor. I never had no life to been so fixed on books. Do you understand? I meant to find the cause of it. Do you see? I have no charity of this woman. I have no charity of her! Excellency, he claims hard evidence in his wife's defense. And lets him submit his evidence in proper affidavit. <coughs> We're certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hale. Clear this room. Come down, Thomas. <laughs> we are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and cannot be heard. Who is this man? <coughs> His wife's Rebecca that were condemned this morning. Indeed? I'm amazed to see you in such uproar. I've only heard the report of your character, Mr. Nurse. I think they must both be arrested in contempt, sir. Like you write early in due time, I will see to it. Excellency, we have proof for your eyes, God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What's what? We have proof of it, sir. They're all deceiving you. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir. I think you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And do you know that there's 400 lie in the jails for marble that's linen upon my signature? And 72 condemned to hang by that signature. Excellency, I never thought the saint was such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. Mary Ward, what, what are you about here? So you speak with the deputy governor. Did you not tell me Mary Ward was sick in bed? She were your honor. When I got her back to the court last week, she said she was sick. She'd be starving with so weak, your honor. She comes down to tell the truth to you. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Excellency. This man is mischief. I think you must do the girl, sir. She is here to Please. present. Mr. Hale. Mary Warren, what would you tell us? She never saw no spirits, sir. Never saw no spirits. Never. This is Mary Warren's deposition. No, no. I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given out the story in the village? We have not. He's come to overthrow the court, Your Honor. I am afraid you, Mr. Paris. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the state in these trials of the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know it. And you, Mary Warren, how came you to cry out people for sending their spirits out against you? Pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. She says it were pretense, sir. Uh, and the other girls, Susanna Walcott and the others, they're also pretending. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall be regarded as it is my duty to tell you this, we burn a hot fire here. It melts all concealment. Are you certain in your conscience, Mr., that your evidence is the truth? I know it is. And you will surely know it. I take it you came here to declare this revelation in open court before the public? I thought I would, with your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? Why, I would save my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart, no hidden in your spirit, any desire to undermine this court? I know, sir. Indeed. I will tell you straight, mister. I have seen marvelous in this court. I have seen people choke before my very eyes in these spirits. I have seen them stuck, like being slashed by daggers. I have until this very moment of the slightest reason to suspect that the girl's name. Your Excellency, does it not strike upon you that 
so many of these women could live so long with such upright reputation. You read the gospel, Mr. Proctor. I read the gospel. I should think not. For you should surely know that Cain were an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us that Rebecca Nurse killed seven babies by sending her spirit upon them? It is only the children, and this one will swear to you that she lied. Judge Hawthorne? I see the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning we received a claim from your wife in which she states she is now pregnant. My wife? Pregnant. There be no sign of it. We've examined her body. But if she says she is, then she must be. The woman will never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not. Never, sir. Never. Mr. Proctor, if I should tell you that I will let her be kept another month, if she begins to show her natural son, she will be kept another year until she is delivered. What say to that? Come, man. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good then, she's saved at least this year. And a year is long. It is done now, sir. Will you drop this charge? <coughs> I, I think I cannot. Then I take it your purpose is somewhat larger. You've come to overthrow the court, Your Honor. These men are my friends. Their wives are also. I judge you now, sir. Sit you down. I am ready to hear your evidence. Oh. Marshal, go in the court and bid Judge Stone and Judge Sewell declare recess for one hour. Let them go to the tavern if they will. All witnesses and prisoners are to be kept in the building. If you'll forgive me, Your Honor, I've known this man all my life. It is a good man. So oh, I'm sure, Mr. Marshal. Now, what depositions do you have for us, Mr. Proctor? And I beg you to be clear, open as the sky and honest. I am no lawyer, sir. So well, pure and hard, no lawyers. Proceed, I suppose. Well. Then I would have you read this. It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declare the good opinion of Martha Corey, Rebecca Nurse, and my wife, your good opinion. Covenant people, Your Honor. Landholding farmers, members of the church. And as you'll notice, many of them have known the women for a long time. And they never saw they had any dealings with the devil. How many names are here? That's one, Your Excellency. Well, these people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave you my word that no harm would come to them for signing This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no all the city Christian people are happy with the court's Salem. These people are gloomy for it, and I think you will want to know from each and every one of them exactly what discontents them with you. I think they ought to be the same, sir. It is not necessarily an attack, I think. These are all covenant Christians, sir. Then they may surely have nothing to fear. I've warned strong for all of these. Arrest for examination. You may sit, gentlemen. Now, what other depositions do you have for us, Mr. Proctor? I've thought trouble on these people I have. No, no. You have brought no trouble on these people. Not if they are within good conscience. But you must understand, sir, a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There is no room between. We live in a sharp time now, a precise time. We live no longer in the dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up, and them that fear not the light will surely praise it. I hope you'll be one of those. She's not hardy, I see. No. No, sir, she's not. Right. Remember what the angel rabbi said before Tobias. That which is good, no harm will come to me. Come, man, we wait you. John, a deposition. Give him mine. Aye. Right. This is Giles Corey's deposition. What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know I never got a good one in my life, Paul. It's very well phrased. My compliments. Mr. Barris, if Mr. Pondam is in the court, bring him in. You have had no legal training, Mr. Roy? I've had the best, sir. I'm 
very third time before in my life. I always play them too. Oh, you were much better one. I never put them on, sir. I know my rights, I've had them. You know, I think your father tried to case him on maybe uh, 35 years ago? Indeed. He did not tell you? No, I got him well. Alright. Well, your father were a fair judge. But at the time I had a white man. Ah, there he is. Mr. Butler? I have here an accusation against you by Mr. Corey, in which he states you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jenkins that is now in jail. Your Honor, that is a lie. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. <coughs> what say you to that? A farm on Thomas Putnam, that's why I said that. What proof do you submit for your evidence, sir? The proof is there. Jacob's hands for which he forfeited up his property. That is the law. There's nothing to sell but the coin but Putnam to buy a piece so great. What proof, sir? We need rock. The proof is there. I hear from an honest man that heard Putnam say, the day Jacob's had for which he received a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What man? The man who gave you this information. Why? I cannot tell you that. And why not? Why you know why not? I hope run in jail. This is contempt of the court. You will surely tell us the name. You told me the name of my wife. I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. <laughs> in that case, I have no choice but to arrest you for contempt. Of this court, you understand that? This is a hearing! You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing! Well, he was a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to declare the court in full session here, or will you give me a good reply? I cannot give you your name, sir. I, I cannot! You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. The court is now in session. I ask you, Mr. Corey, the name of the man who called Thomas Putnam a murderer. Your Excellency. He has a story of confidence, sir. He owns the devil lies in such confidence. Without confidence, there can be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it ought to be broken, sir. Old man, if your informant tells us the truth, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hides that at me, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and central church of this province demand of you the name of him who called Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency! Mr. Hale? We cannot believe it more. There is a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there is a prodigious guilt. Country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I may only fear the Lord, sir, but there is a fear in the country, nevertheless. Reproach me not with the fear in the country. There's fear in the country because there's a moving plot to stop Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is a part of it. No one could the man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. No! Now, Mr. Boy, sit you down and take counsel with yourself, or you will be set in jail until you decide to answer all questions. Cut your throat, Putnam! I'll kill you! Yet. No! Peace, Calvin! Peace! Move it all down, Will! Say nothing more, John. John. He's only playing us. He means to hurt us all! This is a court of law, Mr. I will have no country here! Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace, John. Move it all down. Hold to it now. Here's your rock. Aye, sir. This is Mary Warren's deposition. But have you kept an eye on mine, sir? While you read it. But up until two weeks ago, she was not unlike any of the other girls. You saw her scream, she howled, she swore, the familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, tried to win her soul away, but she refused. We all know this. Sign. She swears now that she never saw Satan. The Holy Spirit, they go clear that Satan may have sent to hurt her. And now she declares that her friends are lying. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter, sir. Oh, it surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man. I know he would. But in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. I beg you, send him home. Stop now. And let him come again with a lawyer. Now look you, Mr. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a letter without there being proof so immaculate, no slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Do you doubt my justice? <coughs> 
Excellency, I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse. I tell you true, Your Honor, I'll not conceal it. My hands shake, let's get what they wound. I beg you, this argument to let the lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, for matters such terrible work, you are most bewildered. I, I don't know, forgive me, I have heard you here at the bar, and I'll be confounded if I were ever called upon to defend these people. I bid you now consider this, and I bid you all do likewise. In ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up witnesses to defend their innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto on its face and by its nature an invisible crime. Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and the victim. None other. I cannot hope that the witches will accuse themselves, granted. Therefore, we must rely upon the victims. And they do testify. The children certainly do testify. And as for the witches, none will deny that we are most eager for their confessions. Therefore, what is left for the Lord's renounce? I think I agreed my point, have I not? But this child claims that the girls are lying, and if they are, that's precisely what I'm about to consider, Mr. Hale. What more were you asking me? Unless you doubt my probity. I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it, then. And let you put your heart at ease. I would, I'd like to question Mr. Hale. Why did the poppets 
not have been hidden where no one ever saw them. There might also be two golden candlesticks, but no one ever saw them either. We are precisely here, Your Honor, to discover what no one has ever seen. Your Excellency, what may Mary Warren profit by turning herself about? What may she gain with hard questioning or worse? You are charging Abigail Williams with the marvelous cruel plot to murder. Do you understand that? I do. I believe she means to murder. This child would murder your wife. It is not a child. Mr. Jacob, think you be so mighty to have help? Then I turn your wits? Like you be 
put in vengeance to work with Rudy's testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. I believe him. By my will to heaven, I believe him. I pray that he bring back his life before She spoke nothing of what you this man lies. I believe him. I may turn my face from it no more. From the beginning, this girl has struck me false. She has been lying. Proceedings! 